Hi class, it's Alyssa Baez. Um, this video is for Chicano Studies, um, Chapter 5, Freedom in a Cage, um, The Colonization of New Mexico. Uh, these are going to be my reflections and interpretations of that section. And the date is December 5th, uh, 2019. The Anglo-Americans conquered the land of what we know today as New Mexico. Profit was the primary motivation for the Anglo's conquest by having political control. Uh, it was also able to increase the, by giving and maintaining the privilege of a few largely Euro-American males, um, as well as their Mexican comrades. Along with political control, Socialization was imperative uh, to the colonization of New Mexico because it was necessary to reinforce it, a structure and taught values um, and justify or explain these values. Socialization was an important factor. Prior to, the, prior to Mexican independence in 1821, New Mexico was on the fringe of the northern frontier of New Spain. The first Spanish settlement started in 1598 and following a time of conflict and change, the original settlement developed and grew. After some time, the increased population further stressed on the Pueblo and nomadic Indians that revolted. In light of the Indian threats and hostilities, the Spaniards set up provinces in Rio Arriba to go about as a cushion space um, between the haciendo, haciendados um, who are owners of oversized large haciendas, um, the Rio Abajo colonists, and, as well as the natives. Land and water were New Mexico's principal resources. They were at the heart of Pueblo. Um, they were at the heart of the Pueblo Indians, Indians' grievances against the Spaniards, many of whom attempted to build uh, large hereditary estates using Pueblo lands and labor. North Americans began. Uh, North Americans began regular contact with New Mexico in the 1820s when they initiated the Santa Fe Trail. The Santa Fe Trail route was constructed in 1821, then established in 1822, the following year. The Santa Fe Trail was a 19th century transportation route through North Central America that connected Franklin, Missouri uh, all the way to Santa Fe, New Mexico. This was the route the American Army used in 1846 for the invasion of New Mexico during the Mexican-American War. Along the lines of the anti-American sentiment, the American, the Mexican anti-American sentiment was further inflamed by the result, by the results in the Mexican-American War, which, in which Mexico lost more than half of its territory to the United States in a tragic, unjust fight. In June 1846, Colonel Stephen Watts Kearney led the Army of the West into New Mexico. As they approached New Mexico, he sent a messenger to Governor Armillo with an ultimatum. As they approached New Mexico, he sent a messenger to Governor Armillo with an ultimatum. The ultimatum was that the U.S. authorities would not disturb them if they would surrender. If they did not surrender, they would suffer the consequences. Many elite New Mexicans were unhappy with the Mexican rule and sought greater autonomy and opportunities by siding with the Euro-Americans. Yet the harshness of the U.S. occupation was unexpected. 
driving many influential New Mexicans to conspire to drive the Euro-American troops out of the province. Among, among those people were Tomas Ortiz, Colonel Diego Archuleta, Padre Antonio Jose Martinez, and Reverend Juan Felipe. Most of Mexico's early colonizers were people who descended from the interior of Mexico in Zacatecas, who were related to family in Chihuahua and Sonora. Therefore, they did not immigrate to New Mexico directly, uh, to the New Mexico region directly from Spain itself. They preferred to identify under the terms Hispanos or Mexican Americans rather than just Mexicans. Since the New Mexicans chose not to resonate with the Mexican origination, they thought they could distance themselves from the intense racism and hatred towards Mexicans, which would allow them better to better their economic and in some cases their social status just by separating themselves from the Mexican label. Compared with most other Western states, the population of New Mexico was dense Many New Mexicans favored statehood because this would allow them to possess political say by being able to vote for governor and judges. Despite this, another problem began to arise with the value of education. Around 30,000 adults were not literate in any form, such as reading or writing. Hispanos did not fund public education, favoring a patriarchal, uh, favoring a, per, a parochial school system which almost exclusively served the higher class population. So statehood was inevitably, um, was inevitable and compulsory um, education with a prerequisite for statehood, which the flaws in the system were evident, in which the flaws in the system were evident. Socialization, especially in the workforce, was fixed to an unfair advantage for Euro-Americans, which made it almost impossible for Spanish Mexicans not to rely on them for their wage paying jobs. Because of the large amount of Euro-Americans in places like Santa Fe, racial and cultural prejudices began to develop um, more and more towards the residents throughout the territory. Thank you.